Sir Clement and Lady Arundel. Right Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Kennedy Simmons and Mrs. Simmons. Deputy Governor General, Honorable Western Paris and Mrs. Paris. Speaker of the National Assembly and the President of the Navy Island Assembly, Mr. and Mrs. Spencer Byron. Members of the Federal and the Navy Government. Members of the Opposition. Members of the Diplomatic Corps including His Excellency Ambassador Shrike of France, Ambassador Eguchi of Japan, Ambassador Strader of Venezuela, our local ambassadors, His Excellency Dr. William Herbert, His Excellency Mr. Terence Byron, Canadian High Commissioner Mrs. Janet Sukoski, Charge of the Affairs of the Embassy of Taiwan, Mr. Charles Tsai and Mrs. Tsai. His Lordship, Mr. Justice Singh, members of the clergy, Mr. Maida of the Tobashiba Corporation, Mr. Jean Chauffeur of Dumez, Mr. Isidore Sharp of Four Seasons, permanent secretaries and other government officials, members of the business community, representatives of the various financial institutions, other distinguished guests from overseas and at home, ladies and gentlemen, friends. About four years ago, serious negotiations started between Dumas and the Navy's Island Administration on the possibility of the construction of an upmarket hotel along the same lines that the Inns of Nevis were promoting, together with an 18-hole championship golf course. It was just over two years ago that negotiations were completed, and was I was engaged in the groundbreaking ceremony where I laid the first stone to commence the construction of this magnificent, luxurious resort. That was an historic moment in industry in Nevis, because we had just opened the gate of golden opportunity in this country. Today, we have just entered the gate, and here we are with a 196-room hotel being operated by the ultimate in the operation of luxury resorts throughout the world and I'm referring to none other than the illustrious company, Four Seasons. <laughs> we have again entered the annals of Caribbean history. Yes. Just over 200 years ago, the first commercial hotel in the Caribbean, the Bath Hotel, was constructed in Nevis. And today we can boast the opening of the first five-star hotel in the region. The decision of the financiers of this resort to choose a small and relatively unknown island like Nevis for such a huge investment must not come as a big surprise. It is true that this country is a repository of natural beauty, history, and hospitality, which make the island irresistible to tourists and investors alike. However, a very significant factor which cannot be overemphasized is the distinctive tourism policy of this administration over the years, which established the framework and environment for tourism expansion. Government's policy of continuing the promotion of upmarket tourism, which is advocated by the Inns of Nevis as opposed to mass market tourism is certainly paying off. Some islands in the region are already experiencing a decline in tourism revenues because they have followed the path of mass market tourism, which resulted in social and environmental deterioration. In order to avert some of the mistakes made by other islands, we have been trying to increase tourism revenue while at the same time 
keeping the number of tourists to a level compatible with the developmental goals of this country. We are therefore trying to attract high quality hotels which target the affluent clientele and Four Seasons is definitely aiding government in the realization of this objective. It has also been government's policy to attract village rather than metropolitan style hotels. We recognize the need to provide a different product for the tourists who come to us from countries with mostly high rise hotels. The Four Seasons Hotel has maintained this style beautifully with its spread out cottages. These are some of government's policies which have made Nevis attractive to luxurious resorts like the Four Seasons. When government finalized the agreement with Belmont Beach Resort to construct this hotel, the people of Nevis greeted the news with mixed feelings. Most people appeared very excited because of the potential benefits that could accrue to the island from the investment of over 80 million US dollars. However, there were others who were more cautious and expressed concern about the potential negative impact that a hotel of this magnitude could have on a small, unspoiled island like Nevis. I must admit that these concerns were justified because development brings with it social costs which are not easily quantifiable in economic terms. It is heartening, therefore, that the hotel has been constructed and is now operating with minimal disturbance to the society so far. However, we cannot afford to become complacent. We must continue to educate our people and to cooperate with, with government and the relevant authorities to avert potential social ills that could ruin our beloved country. Some people have also expressed concern about the numerous concessions that have been given to the resort. One must recognize that these concessions were necessary in order to help attract the institution to Nevis. Several countries throughout the world would have been delighted to attract a hotel of such high international repute to their shores. The concessions we have granted to the resort are similar to what any of the other countries competing for investment capital would have given to lure the investors into choosing their islands to build this gorgeous structure. Despite the many concerns raised by the general public, we have not lost in the bargain. The benefits to Nevis are manifold. The hotel has already employed about 500 locals, and the unemployment rate in the Nevis economy has been reduced to virtually nil. Restaurants and other hotels on the island have been deriving substantial benefits, as a large number of guests at Four Seasons have been encouraged to dine out. During 1991, government expects to collect directly not less than over $1.5 million in accommodation tax from the Four Seasons Hotel. And in subsequent years, the amount is expected to increase to approximately $3 million. This increase in revenue will certainly help government to improve the infrastructure of the island so that we can continue to move forward to economic prosperity. Over the years, the visions on leaving school have been reluctant to pursue a career in the hotel industry, as much scope for development and advancement not provided in the smaller inns of Nevis. With the Four Seasons Hotel employing so many workers, government will be able to widen its education program and focus more on subject areas that will prepare our young people to take up top management positions in hotels in the years ahead. We are also hoping that the high standard of training provided by Four Seasons will filter down to the other areas in the private 
and public sectors, and hence improve the overall efficiency of labor in the country. Agriculture in Nevis has suffered over the years because of the inability of farmers to find a tangible market for their produce. The Four Seasons Hotel can now provide that market, at least partially. The onus is now on the farmers to improve the quality of their produce and work together with the Agricultural Department to exploit the opportunities that the Four Seasons Resort provides. With the opening of this resort, we do not claim to have attained the pinnacle of success. We cannot sit smugly behind the progress that has been achieved so far. The door must be kept open, and the pathway must be paved for the continuing economic advancement of this country. I am happy to report that potential investors are now being attracted to Nevis to exploit business opportunities. Government has already held preliminary discussions with another first-class hotel chain that is showing interest in starting operations in Nevis. This clearly demonstrates that the island has great potential for the future. Despite the tremendous opportunities that are being created, I must remind everyone that a key element in economic development is that the people of the country must be major participants in the development process. Foreigners can be and inevitably are involved as well, but they cannot be the whole story. Further, if growth in the economy only benefits a tiny, wealthy minority, whether domestic or foreign, it is not true development. It is our duty to ensure that the benefits derived from tourism expansion permeate every level of society. However, I must warn the visions that participation in the process of development does not only imply participation in the enjoyment of the benefits of development, but also the production of those benefits. In other words, one must produce first, then consume afterwards. I therefore appeal to all divisions to improve productivity. Some people have been criticizing the management of Four Seasons for filling most of the management positions with workers from overseas. One must recognize that the hotel has just started operating, and there is the need to fill key positions with trained and experienced workers in order to provide the high standard of service for which Four Seasons is renowned. However, the majority of these workers will be leaving after a period of two years, and a number of management positions will become vacant. Local people employed at the hotel must be patient and should utilize every opportunity to improve their management skills so that in the future they could prove themselves worthy and capable to take up more senior positions. I also appeal to the local businesses to start working together in order to maximize the benefits from tourism. The Navy's economy is performing fairly well, and a number of big businesses from outside are now trying to expand their operations into Nevis in order to penetrate the local market and create a niche for themselves. It means that the small local businesses could be faced with extreme competition and be forced out of the marketplace. Government is willing to offer assistance to protect the local businesses from unfair competition. But businessmen will also have to try and help themselves. It is time for the businessmen in Nevis to pool their resources and ideas together to ward off the threat posed by the large business concerns that are now setting up operations in Nevis. It is time for the service sector 
to improve the standard of its operations. The Caribbean of tourists being attracted to Nevis will need a high standard of service. If the service cannot be provided by Nevisions, then others will come in and try to take over the service industry. Let the Four Seasons Hotel be an example to all of us that we should be unstinting in our efforts to provide the standard of service which at least equals or even surpasses that of this so that the tourists will feel compelled to book a return visit to the island even before they depart. The island of Nevis is small and has limited resources, but its people must be determined to move forward. One economist marveled at the success of Japan when he asked, how could a country with so little natural resources and about the size of one state in America develop into a world economic power? This lesson teaches us that we could be small in size and still be strong economically. But the equation of the Japanese success includes such variables as hard work, dedication, cooperation, and teamwork. Let us adopt these attributes and work together to make Nevis a better place for all. I must now take this opportunity to express the sincere gratitude of this administration to all those responsible for ensuring the success of this project. Special mention must be made of the investors, Jumez, Tobishima, and Four Seasons, who showed confidence in the Nevis Island government and readily agreed to make Nevis the first Caribbean island in which a five-star hotel is constructed. The late Fred Kelsick and Mr. Xavier Nice, who introduced Dumez to Nevis, must not be forgotten. The efforts of former ministers of the Nevis Island administration must be commended highly. And I speak of Mr. Arthur Evelyn, Mr. Ural Swanston, and Mr. Ivor Stevens, who were actively involved in the initial negotiations with the investors to win the contract for Nevis. Congratulations are also extended to present ministers, the Honorable Victor Martin, Joseph Parry, and Phineas Griffin for building on the foundation provided and seeing the project to completion. The construction workers, Jaltas, and local contractors must also be praised for building this hotel in record time. Lastly, I must thank the people of Nevis for their patience and understanding during the time this hotel was being built. The Nevis administration has worked untiringly over the years to improve the standard of living of the people of Nevis. We have been traveling through a tunnel filled with darkness gloom, frustration, and disappointments. But we are now seeing a ray of light gleaming in the distance. The construction of this exquisite hotel does not signify the end to all of our problems. But the yoke of despair has been partly broken. And we can look to the future with confidence as we chart the course of this country into the 21st century. Let us build on this foundation, which could serve as a tremendous catalyst to economic development in this beautiful island we call the Queen of the Caribbean. I thank you.